So let's look at an FFT implementation. in C and there's a library which is used everywhere and this is called FFT W3. So it's a standard library. It's used also in MATLAB. So MATLAB is basically using this library running in the background. Um, so let's have a look at the web page of this project here. Let's just pull this on the screen. So that's the FFT W library, so the source code can be downloaded at this from this web page here, fftw.org, and can be compiled. But this library is also a standard component of Linux. So those of you who have got Ubuntu Linux installed have directly this library installed and, and you can use it. And I just guide you quickly through how this library is being used. And so how to use. That's done in a couple of steps. So first we just allocate memory. So for our for our time series. So this could be either real numbers, usually in double or complex numbers, where we just leave the complex part zero, and obviously our frequency coefficients. We are reserving space for that. So if we are starting, starting with a real sequence, then the frequency coefficients are just half of them. So FFT W3 really takes care of that. Let's have a look here in this program I've written and how this works here. So we see here, so in is our array which is taking the time series. So FFTW has a special malloc function which is allocating the data or the memory for this here. So buffer size is the size of our Fourier buffer, uh, of our sample buffer, and we are casting this into double. And then we are also creating the output array here, which is in this case so um, an array of complex numbers. That's a special type here provided by the FFTW library and it's called FFTW complex. We've got our FFTW malloc command again here. And um, so we are creating here these n out samples. Because we are not interested in the mirror, we're just generating half of that here and um, ignoring the mirror, the FFTW function knows about that, so there won't be any segmentations fault, faults happening here. Okay, so let's go back to our steps. Then obviously the second step is fill array with data. In my case I do it on a sample by sample basis because I do like Zemi real-time processing. Let's have a quick look how I've done that. Um, this is at the very bottom here. There's a function called append and I just store the value in this in array here and then I just increment a pointer and at some point it's full. Okay, so that's why that was easy. So we fill the array with data. So now step number three is this is a bit unusual or counterintuitive, maybe, at first sight. Create a so-called plan. And this plan really, it means like a plan what to do um, during the Fourier transform. So as an example, we um, create a plan which is converting a real sequence into a complex sequence. And so we know that there's, a, there's also a mirror 
and the mirror is automatically omitted in the computation. So let's have a look at the code, how this is done in the code. So there's our Emacs there. So we go a bit further up here. Um, so this was our allocation. Let's um, scroll down to our plan. Makes this a bit wider. Okay, so this is our bit we are looking at now. So we see here this function FFTW plan DFT R2C. This means real to complex in one dimension because it also, also is able to convert images. And then we just give it the buffer size. We give it the um, input array, we give it the output array, and then this magic constant here, which is just a constant which is determining the speed of the computation. FFTW estimate is trying to do it as fast as possible. And then after we have um, created this plan here, then the FFT library knows what to do with it, and then after this we just issue an FFTW execute and then and then basically the FFT is computed here. So that's a step here with FFT execute where this plan is executed. So that's our final step here. So we just have um, as a four steps step here, execute and then just retrieve the Fourier transform.